Hi guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get to Wave 7 of the Haunted Forest solo. Now, some of you guys might not do it solo, you might be in a fire team, but this is definitely how to get you and your fire team set up to hit Wave 7 pretty easily. So, we're doing this on the Warlock. You can use whatever class you want. I'm doing it on the Warlock because the Nova's super is going to be really, really effective for hitting the boss and it synergizes well with oppressive darkness and vortex grenade so they're they, they are going to be what we're going to be doing the majority of our damage if not all of our damage to most of the end of wave bosses end of level bosses so as you can see top tree grenade jobs are good so i have paired that with the mountaintop now most people would have seen that straight away and thought i don't have the mountaintop the mountain top is, is what I'm going to use should I need to do extra damage. So you can put whatever you want on. You know, you can use whatever you want to do extra damage to bosses should you need to. I'm, I've am i chose to use the, the mountain top. I've, I've paired it with a recluse. It's not requisite. I just had the recluse on in case the unlikely event that, that actually did happen once where I run out of heavy ammo. This is going to be what we're going to be using as our primary. The Thunderlord, I used it last time. Me and my team got to wave 10 or 11 or something like that using it. And bearing in mind, you know, that's that's not a team of, you know, content creators. That's, that's just a group of players who like to play. I'm kind of the one that does the solo stuff. They're, they just like to play. So, you know, they're, they're decent players, but, you know... This is this is for the, every fire team can benefit from this. Its perks are what really makes this important. Rain havoc and lightning rounds. Obviously, having feeding frenzy and armor piercing rounds is really good, but those perks basically mean not only do you chain lightning, but when you're consistently damaging an enemy, you hit them with a lightning blast mid fire. So you'll be doing more damage from hitting them. Because you'll be doing this lightning attack every couple of seconds. Very, very, very underrated weapon. Kind of got left behind when it, when machine guns got nerfed. But for this, it's such a solid choice. So, the armor we're going to use is going to synergize against that. We're going to need mods that are not only going to help us with the performance, but also the efficiency. So, Storm of Lead. Storm of Lead is really important because you're going to be getting a lot of machine gun kills and you want your super and you want to get your super as you're going through that wave. So when you do wave one, by the end of wave one, you want your super. Same again, wave two, three, four, five. So having on a, a, a mod that gives you extra super energy on machine gun kills is almost a no brainer. And as you can see, we've got oppressive darkness because why would you have a void grenade on and not have that on? I've gone, gone with Machine Gun Scavenger and Machine Gun Dexterity. The Dexterity basically means I pull it out faster, I, I ready it faster, stow it faster. It's just better handling for the, for the weapon all round. Machine Gun Scavenger, I, I get more heavy per brick. It's as simple as that. Hive Barrier, because there's a fair amount of hive in here. And as you'll notice, I've got a lot of discipline mods. Because we want to we, we want to give ourselves the best chance to make sure if we have to use a grenade, we want it back before we get to the boss. Large arm reserves, overload grenades, and discipline mod. The reason I've got this chest plate on is because it already came with 18 discipline. So that's why I'm using that. You could go with you could go with an arc and have have uh, more machine gun ammo. I went with to be fair, my favourite chest plate, but I went with it. Because, and large arm reserves because it gives me more mountain top as well. So, synergy, you know. Uh, enhanced machine gun loader on my controverse holds. I've got an arc set. I've also got a void set. So, the arc was perfect. I always put fastball on because if I don't, every grenade I throw lands right at my feet almost. I'm just too used to it. But this is something that I, th I feel like needs to be spoke about. Because I remember last Festival of the Lost, I'd done this with a few randoms. Just helped them get to... Wave, uh, the seventh wave and they just didn't know about these so basically when you get the mask this is this is the mithrax uh, uh, cosmetic the ornament but when you get the mask it has 
these three mods that they, they're they're only active inside the haunted forest energetic assassin basically each one of them energetic assassin higher purpose and vampiric touch they all come with increased drop chance uh, in, increase the drop rate of heavy ammo they all come with a, a damage increase but they all have a, a specific and individual first perk so energetic assassin is increased damage to terrors and precision kills uh, grant grenade and melee energy vampiric touch is significant increased damage to challenging enemies and precision kills trigger health regen and the one i use is higher purpose higher purpose significant damage resistance while airborne i constantly jump when i get shot it's i don't know it's, it's just i like to be in the air i don't know what that says about me but so getting a damage resistance when I'm in the air, I figured would be really good, not just for ads, but it would also be really good for those, for, for the, the immune knights that are about. And it really is. Significant uh, increased damage to all enemies. That's why I've went with that. The airborne damage resistance is really good, but doing damage to all enemies, it means you get through each wave faster. Because you're not just doing damage to the more damage to the terrors, or the challenging enemies, or the bosses. You're doing it to the adds as well, the miners, the shielded miners. So it allows you to get through the waves faster. So I chose to go with that. You level it up as you do, as you do the haunted forest. But if you've done it from last year, there will still be your upgraded mine wars. And that's going to be what I'm going to use during this run now. Let me just tell you, I'm not going to commentate the whole run. What I'm going to do is I'm going to commentate the first two sections. And then I'm going to let you guys watch the rest of the gameplay. So you can apply anything, any kind of tips, hints and tricks that I've tried to impart on you guys. And you can see them in action then. Maybe, you know, hopefully it resonates. You know, and maybe, maybe, maybe that will be a better way to do this one. So on with the run. So, as soon as you get into the forest, what you want to do is make sure you pull out the Thunderlord. Now, you drop an absolute stack of heavy, so don't worry about that. Just The first thing I'm going to say is, as you're making it through these waves, don't go hunting for one solitary enemy that's ran away. It's just not worth it. Time is more important than, than getting kills. You get, you get 2% per normal enemy, 4% per elite, and 8% for a terror. The area you finish up on, 90% of the time will have more enemies than you actually needed. So don't waste time going and chasing down a single enemy. Make sure you pick up any heavy you see, reload after you get a kill. Make sure that you've still got Feeding Frenzy up, and it, it, it just helps so much. And we're going for efficiency, so, you know, don't stand miles away from, from two enemies. The Thunderlord will finish them off, right? Now, as you, people that haven't done this before might not know this, but everybody that's done it before will know the modifiers change each round. So just be careful of the modifiers. Don't go charging into an area if blackouts the modifier, because you do not know what you're going to be facing. When you get to each wave, you want to assess it. You don't just want to run straight in, but, you know, just... Just be careful when you're attacking enemies. You will get areas like this. As you can see, I've got a lot of terrors. A lot of terrors in this area. And that's good because normally you average anywhere between 22 and 30% on a normal area. When you get lots of, of uh, terrors, you can get up to 60% in a single area because of that 8% per terror. Make, as I say, make sure you reload after after a kill. And and what I try and do is, especially at the end, you see there, see how fast that reload is? And now I'm at the boss. Now, I don't have my super because I got there so quickly. So, I'm going to kill some of these ads with the machine gun. Gives me my super. I'm going to go airborne, throw the grenade, and the Nova. And that's the first boss done. So, uh... As you can see there, you 
get to the boss pretty quickly on the first wave. You're going to be angling, because you've got 15 minutes, you're going to be angling to finish each wave with two in two minutes. Now, sometimes you'll finish it faster, sometimes you won't finish it as fast. The idea is, when you get, when you get to the sixth wave, as long as you get past the boss, it doesn't matter how much time you've got, as long as you get past the boss and you get into the seventh wave, the game will let you complete the seventh wave. You just can't die in the seventh wave. Now, I don't die in this run. Uh, it is a flawless run. That is kind of the way you want to do it. Uh, is, ju is just not have any mistakes. Another thing I try and do is, if at all possible, uh, when I'm getting to, when I've cleared a wave, I try and jump as I'm reloading. And reload in the air because it just speeds things up a little bit. So, as you can see, I'm trying to assess this next area, right? I'm trying to see where, where the ads are. I've just killed a couple of enemies, so I'm going to reload. If you're in any doubt of where the enemies are, make your way towards the exit and have them come to you. So I can see here there's quite a lot of, of uh, elites and there's quite a lot of uh, terrors. So, but these, these are the hardest waves. The hardest waves are when it seems like the, it's, there's more cover for the ads than there are you and when they spread out. So I know it's a terror. As soon as that gate opens, it doesn't matter if there's another ad, I'm going. Because as I say, the area I get teleported to the boss, invariably there's going to be more ads there than I need. So if I waste tons of time going back for an enemy that's ran away and, and hid, I'm, I'm not doing myself any favours. So as you can see, I'm getting hit, so I've decided to stay back a little bit. Thunderlord can do its work from damage, I don't need to be real close. I'm just making sure I get that reload. Reload before the boss. I, I never got my super, but I'm really close to it. There we go. Now, the only thing I would say about stuff like this is, you've seen there that the boss took the full impact of the super. You'll see later on, especially, I said I was going to speak about this, especially the Minotaur. For some reason, the and it's, it's, it's consistently happened to me. The Nova Bomb, even at, though I was aiming at the Minotaur and fired it, it never tracked the Minotaur. So... That's something to think about. But the rest of them, make sure as much as possible that when you throw the grenade, if there's any ads near the boss, make sure, try and try to make sure that, the, the, that your super doesn't hit the ads, that it hits the boss. Because if it hits the ads, it's kind of going to take some of the damage off of what you'll do against the boss. Again, once you get to wave 6, as long as you complete it in the time limit and kill the boss, you'll be given the time to finish 7. And, and that's how you do it. Now, as you can see, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to be very careful that attrition's the modifier. Uh, so as long as I pick up, as long as I pick up the, the little attrition, these little fonts are light. You see the boss there, that, that uh, knight that you can't kill. As long as you pick them up, you'll be fine because it increases your, your uh, health regeneration for, for quite some time afterwards. And that's it. Literally just use the Thunderlord. Don't jump into areas until you know what's there. If you see them bunched up like that, uh, throw a grenade at them. And if you see ads sitting like, like how they are now, use the Thunderlord from range. It will it will clear big waves of ads. And as you can see, we're back at the boss. Again, don't have my super just yet, but we, it won't take us too long with, uh, with the mod that we have. There we go. And now charge your grenade. As soon as you get it. Charge your grenade, throw it. And some bosses are more difficult to kill than others. So I found that the ogre and the server the 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 ogre, the server and the hydra were the hardest. All the rest of them went down pretty quickly, but the Minotaur didn't like the Nova Bomb. I couldn't track him very often. So I'm going to let you guys watch out the rest of the video. i done this live on stream last night. So if any of you guys are interested, I'm going to put a link in the description to the streaming channel. I stream on YouTube every Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. And we work out runs and strategies there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you. And if you're running with a fire team, I hope it helps all of you guys get, get your wave sevens and get your pinnacles and your triumphs. Uh, thanks for the support guys, enjoy the video.
and I will see you in the next one.